there's no way it's on live. It's on. It says live right there. <laughs> yeah. Still, but, we've done this for like a year now. But like, when, it's been a year. No. Almost. Like March? No, it hasn't. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know. Now it says live up there only eight seconds. So I know, maybe it right? Wasn't. I'm telling you, when we go to replay this video, everybody's going to see that I was right because you, like, the whole, hey, everybody, what's up? It's completely cut off. It's just me going like this. Hey, everybody, what's up? Now it's not cut off. Now anymore. it's not cut off. <laughs> now it works. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About It Tuesday. We are here to talk about it on Tuesday, not taco on Tuesday. Maybe later. Hopefully. If we get lucky. Why well, you got your fingers crossed? It depends on who's in charge of cooking the meal. That's <laughs> me. That's this woman. So you don't need to cross your fingers because you know what you're making. I do know. I'm making tortellini Tuesday. Well, that's not tacos. It's not taco. Can we put it? them in a taco? Can we put tortellini in taco? It's just like Taco Town. It'd where be it's like, like uh, on Saturday Night Live. Mex Mex Italian. <laughs> Does anyone remember the Taco Town commercial from Saturday Night Live? Hilarious. They put all the things in the taco, wrap it up in, a, in like a frozen pizza, put it in a bag and dump chili on it. It's the Taco Town Ultimate Supremo Taco. Binging with Babish uh, is a great YouTube channel for those who like to cook and bake. You should check it out. Their Taco Town Taco, he like recreates it in real life. But we're not here to talk about tacos you, you know at what's all. Another great YouTube channel to watch. <laughs> the Nina Min team. <laughs> Since, since you're name dropping YouTube channels, <laughs> might as well put ours in there, right? I guess so. All right. What's up, everybody? It is Rachel and Jerry Niesman. Uh, Niesman team at Keller Williams Realty in for Myers to talk about it. And what it is varies from week to week. It's usually something real estate related because that's what we do. That's what we know to talk about. And, um, yeah, there was a couple things I realized as we were going in today's Talk About It Tuesday. Uh, first off was the realization that I always call this my side. And in all actuality, we switch sides. And I always complain about being on the wrong <laughs> side, no matter which side I'm on. So, apparently, I'm wrong all the time oh look and we have no look. right side we our, our mascot's our mascot's outside with trying us. to join us he wants to he's can you, guys can you is so excited to talk about come home on. contingencies come on. listen this nope. is a hot come hot on. topic oh. isn't it jerry it's yeah because it's adjusting contingencies is a way to help get your offers accepted that's true when you are uh dealing in a competitive market and can make your offer more attractive I'm being a little bit sarcastic about this being really exciting, but no, it really is important information that has absolutely nothing to do with my side of the business. So I am going to be the voice of me and you for those who are watching us live. Uh, feel free, as always, with Talk About Tuesday to take notes in the comment box if you want to ask us specific questions about home contingencies or anything really related to making offers on homes and or accepting offers as, as a seller and let us know what questions you have about the different contingencies we're going to kind of go over what the most common contingencies are in contracting for homes and home sales and purchase and then talk about who it benefits is it beneficial to the buyer to the seller how can you use contingencies to make uh or strengthen uh you accepting an offer or you making an offer it, whether or not you're buying or selling this is uh new to me this is not my cup of tea. This is what Jerry does. This is what he is excellent at doing, just as I am great at making sure you all get your Christmas cards every single year, and I do all the adorable things. Jerry is really excellent at negotiating contracts and the, the legalese behind uh, real estate contracts. This is what you do. It is what this I do. Is, this is your wheelhouse. Um, you, you're great at a lot of things. And so I'm really looking forward to learning something. If you guys watching have a specific question or want us to slow down or ask for clarification, just type it in the notes again and we will talk about it. All right. So what is a contingency? Let's bring it down to like baseline 101. What does that even mean? So a contingency in contract terminology is basically a clause that allows you to get out of the contract it's a for one party or from, another from what google taught me about the definition of contingency it's 
it's you putting a plan in place for unforeseen potential circumstances. Correct. So it's not just get out of the contract, but well, it's really if the, if you're trying to have foresight, you know, we always joke about hindsight's 2020. It's you as a home seller, a home buyer, having foresight into potential hiccups and putting a plan in place prior to, which we are big fans of. Yes. Because um, as is, what are we on year 11 right now? 11 years yep. of selling houses, uh, hundreds of families, very happy working with us. Um, every once in a while there's a hiccup and it's usually a new hiccup that we haven't experienced before. And we learn from the hiccup and make well, contingencies for the this, future. Yeah. I mean, we, we run into the same things over and over again. There's a few that are very common to run into. And if you plan for it ahead of time or prepare for it ahead of time, then you can mitigate the stress and frustration right. that comes from it. We call Jerry the pot holder. That's his nickname for the Neesman team. He's the pot holder. He's the one who holds all the heat when things heat up or get uh, frustrated between parties, whether it's, you know, uh, buyer or seller issues or mortgage companies or title companies. If things go in the mix, Jerry's the pot holder. And I feel like he uses home contingencies to help, like you said, minimize or mitigate these potential issues. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it. And let's talk about some potential home contingencies that you can either include. And before we get into like the specific things, why does it, how can it like strengthen or hinder a contract? So if you're preparing ahead of time for these things that come up on every single deal, especially the, the common ones that come up all the time, if you're prepared for them and you've got the proper documents in place in the contract, then it it's not a problem. Right. So stuff comes up, but we all know in advance how we're going to handle it if it comes up. And so you're basic, you're just preparing yourself so that we've got all those bases covered. Yeah. All right. So to no hit, holes. hit me with some, um, let's talk about, certain the most common home contingencies that you see what do you think is the single most frequent writing in a contract this contract is contingent upon what well the most common is going to be home inspection because okay. almost every single deal has a home inspection contingency factored into it do it's, we is it like default wording in the contract default written into the contract so the the contract is basically, there's a ton of, it's 12 pages, the, the standard, well, there's two different contracts, first of all. What are they called? What are the two different you might see? So first of all, we have the the regular bar bar, which is stands for Florida Association. Yeah, Florida Association of Realtors. Okay. Um, and so that's the the association of realtors in the state of florida put this contract together to be used blanket across the entire state okay now different local boards have different contracts that they might use over one another but the, the it, florida contract is typically accepted pretty much anywhere don't many napal realtors use a different one yes they use their own neighbor which is the okay. naples area board of realtors contract that they've written they can use both yep uh, they could use either yep. you wouldn't and need two of them right correct and different realtors prefer have different preferences <laughs> okay but there's two there's the standard contract okay which has the there are a few differences but the the biggest one that people get confused on uh is probably the home inspection okay uh, verbiage that's written in there where in the standard contract it has a blank spot for you to write in a certain dollar amount uh, that Whoa. goes towards repairs okay. automatically all right so anything noted in a home inspection there's already a dollar amount set aside for those repairs okay in, in can the, you write zero you can write zero okay you write whatever number you want you write a million dollars if you want but then so that's the seller you could, signing is up a buyer making an offer on a home that you saw right in there 
I want up to a thousand dollars of repairs according to the inspection covered. Correct. And they would factor that in. Does that just come off the bottom line? The, so, the then the seller would have to pay out of pocket up to a thousand dollars. If there's a thousand dollars worth of worth of issues okay. found in the home inspection, then that thousand would automatically. So when if I'm the listing agent, I'm advising my client with that contract, take a thousand off. Just, just take a thousand dollars off because of it could be anything. Okay. I mean, it could be a sim. It could be any minor little, uh, like as simple as a torn screen on the lanai that switch might cost fifty missing, bucks. Right. Switch plates cracked or missing uh, on your light switches or outlets. Those all those little things will add up to whatever that okay. dollar amount is, and typically it's a thousand bucks or more. Okay. Uh, pretty easily. So. Um, so it's written in on the a standard contract. Amount. Okay, a on, dollar amount and a date for you, inspection. Yes, you have a certain okay. number of days to get the inspection completed and to come to an agreement on those repairs. So if, if there's, there's any requested, what's the typical days for an inspection contingency? So the contract has you have the ability to fill in a different number of days but the contract if you leave it blank is 15 days okay so that is 15 calendar kinda, days correct not working days correct so 15 calendar days is the standard uh you can adjust it and so most like, people do most people try to go shorter than that because as a seller especially in a, the current hot market that we have right now oh that's seller friendly, 15 days is sitting is on too the, long so okay. we're typically asking for between seven and ten days which is still doable but tight okay um and some people ask for less or some sellers will say we want you to waive the contingency okay so for example right, cool. on the listing we have now we did a pre-listing inspection okay so we the sellers paid for a home inspection oh cool had it had the inspectors come they did the inspection and so now we can provide that inspection and say look we have the we've had this inspection done you of course are welcome to to request to do your own. Sure. Um, Did you offer it to them? But we have this available, and we're willing to show it to you. And here's the things that they found, and here's the things that we took care of. Oh. So then that way, that's really nice. It can allow the buyer to feel comfortable that they can waive the inspection and just that and know that they've had the an that an inspection has been done. Cool. which can help make that offer a little bit stronger if they feel comfortable with that. Very cool. Um, so a so a home contingency for inspections would include in the contract amount potentially that a seller would have to cover up to the amount of time that a buyer has to get an inspection, get the report back, and then speak with the the people who are selling the home, their agent, about what is in that report and then negotiating and it then, or discussing and then come, it. Come back the to the seller. The buyer then would come back to the seller and say, if there's any repairs that they want done, then they would ask for those repairs to be done and you have to renegotiate. Okay. So in the, the standard FARBAR contract, it removes a lot of that negotiation because there's already a dollar amount set aside. Okay. The most common contract that is used here, at least in this area, is the Farbar as is contract okay. where they you're you're signing that you're buying it as is. You have the right to inspect. Okay. And then when you do inspect, you then have the right to ask the seller to repair anything that they didn't disclose, which typically they're finding thing the the point of the inspection is to find things that were not obvious okay. to begin with. So you know, if the refrigerator is not working, it's pretty easy to open the refrigerator door and see, hey, the refrigerator's not right. working when you're there walking through the home. But if the air conditioner is not blowing at the proper temperature split, most buyers and most buyers agents are not walking through a home with a thermometer measuring the air temperature that's going into the return and the air temperature that's coming out of a vent. Okay. That's what a home inspector does. Sure. So there might be it might feel cool in the house but the ac may not be working properly okay so that's one of those unforeseen things and the seller probably doesn't even know that sure um so the most common i would say is going to be your home inspections what else um and we talked about how you can as a seller make a buyer feel more comfortable buying the home without a contingency in a crazy market like we have 
where that might be a big benefit. Does it ever benefit a buyer to forego an inspection? It allows, it, it makes the offer more attractive to the seller. Okay. Because so it can benefit them in that if you're in a multiple offer situation and everybody else wants a home inspection and you're waiving your right to an inspection, I'm not saying I recommend it right. because you never know what you're going to get into. There's things that you cannot foresee, but Outside if you're waiving that in that right to the inspection, it will make your offer more attractive Correct because me. they don't have to worry about a renegotiation mm -hmm. for repairs. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like we have had a cup a handful of people bypass inspections because they said we know it needs work we we can like we're going to be doing the work we would rather have the extra four hundred dollars or whatever the cost of an inspection is we would rather have that towards the repairs that we know are already going to go into it yes we have so but it typically doesn't other than making it a more attractive offer, it usually doesn't offset the risk for a buyer to Correct. risk right. buying because a three hundred thousand dollar house for a, to save three hundred. It's right. what is uh, it stepping home in, over? Home stepping inspection. Over yeah, I mean, a home inspection is between typically three hundred fifty and six hundred dollars, depending on what uh, what inspections you have them do, and a new air conditioner is between thirty three thousand and ten thousand dollars, depending on the home and the size and all that. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's huge differences. So it, it absolutely typically is worth the money to, to get an to inspection. Get but inspection. if you feel comfortable waiving it, then it will make your offer more attractive for sure. So let's talk about some financing contingencies because that's that be also a, pro yep. probably number two, you think? Yep. Only in that, um, and the only reason it's not number one is because you got a lot of cash buyers. There's the, they, not they everybody don't have finances. A Almost everybody does an inspection, but not everybody finances the home. So let's talk about different financing contingencies. Um, it can go both ways, right? Uh, can a seller put a home on a market with the contingency that, um, like they need to find a home and be under contract? Cause they can't be homeless. Sure. So how does that work? How does like, that doesn't, that seems tricky. It is. Um, but that's totally different than like a typical finance. Right. Right. So your typical finance contingency is if you don't, a if contingency you can't get a mortgage, for the buyer. You, yeah. You get your money back. Correct. If you don't qualify for a loan, you get your money back. And so, under any circumstances, what no. if I go and tell the mortgage company, Oh, I get a pre-approval. Is it a pre-qual or a pre-approval, which they don't verify anything? Pre-approval. So I go in. Okay, so I am I am buyer A, and I go in, and I say, yes, here's my pre-approval letter. And I told them I make $500,000 a year, but in actuality, that's just how much I want to be worth, and I don't make anything. Like, is there any recourse for the seller who accepts that contract when the, when the financing falls through, or no, and you're just stuck with it? So... A finance. But you would know something like that pretty quickly, right? Maybe. So a finance contingency is a longer contingency, okay. and basically what it does is it protects the buyer. Okay. Um, and allows them to be able to get out of the contract if they do not qualify. Sure. Now, that's really on the listing agents. It, I mean, hopefully the buyer's agent as well, because the buyer's agent doesn't want to be spending a bunch of time writing offers, showing houses, driving around town, showing sure. properties to buyers who can't buy a home. So hopefully the buyer's agent did their due diligence and called the, the, the mortgage company and verified what the mortgage company verified. So they, mm. they asked the mortgage company, did you verify their income? Did you look at their credit? Smart. Did you do these things? Or did you just write them a piece of paper that says, yes, they can buy a home if everything they put on their application is legit. Sure. Uh, but they didn't verify whether it's legit. So before we accept an offer, I typically call the lender and ask them those questions sure. as the listing agent. Oh, okay. So I call the buyer's lender because they've got to provide us. We request that they provide us with their pre-approval or pre-qualification letter. Um, so we have the lender's information. We call the lender and we verify, did you check all these things? Okay. So then they can tell us, yes, they did. No, they didn't. 
So uh, hopefully they've done that. They've verified that the income is good. They've checked the credit. They've uh, verified bank statements and, and tax returns and all that stuff. If they've done all that, then it still has to go through underwriting. Okay. But at least we know that the loan officer has looked at it and verified that yes, on the surface, everything looks like it, it works. Sure. Um, so typically a mortgage contingency is somewhere between 15 and 30 days. The contract, if you leave it, there's a fill in the box, a fill in the blank again spot where you can put a timeline for when the mortgage contingency is up. Is there a default? The like default, if you leave it blank, is 30 days. Okay. So typically figure 30 days, um, but you can request it to be shorter. And obviously shorter makes your offer more attractive okay. if you're the buyer. Okay. And the seller has the right to negotiate. You know, if you make an offer at 30 days, the, the seller has the right to request it be shorter, shorter than, than that. that. Okay. Um, so basically... Let's say you don't qualify as you're the buyer. Okay. That situation that happened. You can't prove that you make the money. Okay. You have too much debt. You can't qualify. Oop. So now the mortgage company then, as long as you've done everything you're supposed to do, provided them all the information that you're supposed to provide. Okay. Then the mortgage company will give you a denial letter that says they can't give you a mortgage. You send that over. You say, hey, I can't buy the house. I'm sorry. I need out, I want my deposit back. Is this what makes cash offers sometimes more attractive than yes. a finance offer? Yes, is because this is not a contingency on a cash cash deal. There is no finance contingency. Oh, okay, so that makes sense. Yes. So that's why when they're like, we're gonna pay full price in cash, it's like, woohoo, because then they're just gonna write you a check for the amount you want for the house. You don't have to worry. You, you would just have to worry about inspection contingency Correct. that's written in. Right. You don't have any financing contingency that's written in. They right. just have to show like proof that they have that much money. They put some money in escrow. Yep. And then, okay, cool. So that makes sense that and now talk to me about, um, not just cash versus finance, but different types of financing are stronger offers more i don't want to say stronger are more so, attractive offers so it depends on who you're talking to okay um but to this guy. <laughs> so the um the only difference is there's multiple different loan types Okay. And so it's going to depend on the type of loan and certain loan types have additional inspections. Okay. So every finance offer, you can assume there's going to be an appraisal. Okay. There are some uh, exceptions to that. Okay. But basically what you're getting into with the different loan types is the different appraisals. Okay. Um, so separate from a finance contingency is an appraisal contingency. Now, almost every finance deal is also going to include an appraisal contingency because almost every finance deal is going to, the bank require is going to require appraisal. an appraisal. Like I said, there's some exceptions. There's certain price points in certain locations and things like that where the lenders are waiving a full in-person appraisal inspection where they're either just doing driveway drive-bys or like Google map it. Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much. Or they, they do like a, uh, hey. uh, what they call like a desktop appraisal. Okay. Where basically they just go and they have their automated system like, and that analyze. kicks up a number and says, okay, yes, we're good. Okay. Um, so some of them will be waived based on that. Um, but there's no guarantees of that. Not every lender does that, Not and not every home is going to qualify for it. So the appraisal contingency states that an appraiser is going to come out, they're going to look at it, and they're going to evaluate the home for the bank. Correct. And they're going to put a number on that home. How that much the it's bank, worth? It's, it's not how much it's worth, because a home is worth whatever people are willing to pay for it. Okay. 
So an but appraisal will say how much. How much the appraiser thinks the mortgage thinks should the lose. home, the appraiser. It's basically their estimation of value. So what okay. they feel it's worth. Um, and that number, because they are a licensed appraiser, that number is what the bank uses I as see. the value to loan, as the value of the home to to uh, loan against. So how long is that timeline? Is, is an appraisal contingency usually valid for? Um, so it depends. Typically, it's shorter than the finance contingency because they have to get the appraisal back. But to, longer than inspection, it usually goes inspection, inspection appraisal, appraisal finance. financing, and then eventually all the magic happens Yes, and a home is bought and sold. Okay. And um, is there anything other than, like we said, uh, oh, I'm going to write a check for this home. Is there anything that a buyer or seller can do to impact the appraisal contingency, making a, an offer more enticing or exciting? You could waive it. But you can't, but like, <laughs> you, you so, can't, I can't as a buyer, right? I can't be like, yo, I don't need an appraisal because that's up so to my No, right? you can't say I don't need an appraisal. But what you can do is offer to cover the difference. Oh. So mm -hmm. if an appraisal comes back low, which happens, Sure. Um, and it's happening more frequently as prices continue to go up at fairly quick rate. Um, you as the buyer can say, look, we feel that this is the proper value of this home. Right. So let's say you make an offer, a home's listed for 350 Sure. And you say, I'm going to make a full price offer. Now, in a lot of markets, you're making over full price. I I know there's markets out there where people are paying fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 over list price. Okay. But let's just say, for all intents and purposes, full price is three fifty. You offer three fifty. The and you say in your initial offer. In your initial offer, you could say I'm offering three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And I inspections in ten days. And if if the home doesn't appraise for three fifty, because the bank wants to see it appraise for contract price or higher. Because let's say you're doing a regular conventional mortgage, you're putting 20% down. So 350, 20% of that, $75,000, right? 350. No, no, it's more than that. It, no, it's less than that. It's 70. Okay. 70,000. So got there first. Good job. High five. <laughs> so your down payment is $70,000. And you're financing 280. Um if the appraisal comes back at 300 let's just say well now 80 percent of 300 is minus 60 340 yes so 240. they were 240. 240. so they were going to finance 280 if it was worth 350 but now they're only going to finance 240 because it's worth 300 according to the appraiser okay so now you've got a forty thousand dollar spread on the loan okay well that can be a problem but you could offer to show up but you cash. could say whatever it doesn't whatever the difference is in the appraisal we will bring additional cash to cover that we'll just pull it out of our big sack of cash yep so now in that instance you would be bringing your sixty thousand dollar down payment plus the additional 50. So now you'd have to come to the table with 110,000 plus your closing costs to close. But if you didn't make that offer, it may not be, you it may, may not, not be have, your home. It may not be your home because you may not have enticed the person staring at six contracts. The, like that may be the thing. There may be people offering $375,000 on the $300,000 house. But if they can't step up to the table with that, they may choose the more sure thing to close and may take less money overall on the house for the guarantee that somebody could uh, cover the appraisal discrepancy, Correct. right? Okay, cool. Yes. So you Ooh, can- This is hard work. Oh so my yes, goodness. You can not necessarily waive the appraisal <laughs> itself, but you could at least theoretically ease the seller's mind of whether it will appraise or not by offering to cover any discrepancy should it not appraise for full price cool, or, or whatever price the contract 
for contract price. Let's talk about the absolute madness that is uh, contingent upon sale of other homes. How? How even? So this is Where really even? tough to get done right now because <laughs> there are so many other, uh, there's so many buyers out there and fewer homes that it's it's a little bit more difficult to get done. Uh, if you're if you're trying to do this right now as a buyer is to say I want to buy your home but I'm not going to buy your home if I can't sell my current home. Which in a seller's market, you many people are assuming like it shouldn't be that hard to get done. It's not like houses are sitting on that on the market for 180 days. Correct, but why would I accept that offer if I have somebody else who wants to buy my home and make an offer that can do it free and clear doesn't have a house to sell. So it does really come down, doesn't it, to all of these different contingencies in a contract that make a contract make sense to somebody selling the home, so and then yeah. you can consider as a buyer to make the a more right enticing so, offer. And so all of these things come together to create the deal. Sure. And so the question becomes, how do you make as a buyer who wants to buy a home, who wants to buy a specific home, they fall in love with it. How do you make your offer as enticing as possible, but at the same time, make sure that you're protected so that you don't yes. get yourself in a situation where you're stuck and, nice. and can't either can't close or and you know, situation where you end up losing your deposit or whatever. You don't want anybody to be homeless or have two houses. Or like unless they want two houses. Yeah, yeah. Or uh under contract on something that they can't buy and losing their deposit. Yeah, that's a nightmare so, for everybody involved. Correct. The dream is to make everybody in the situation, buyers and sellers, to feel like they have won with what they were hoping to accomplish. Correct. And um it looks like and sounds like there's a lot of other considerations that aren't just price of a home. Correct. Yeah, so everybody, as a seller, typically you pick up the phone as a listing agent and say, hey, we got an offer on your house or we got multiple offers on your house and all they wanna hear is what's the price, what's the price, what's the price. But really what the end decision comes down to is usually more of the terms. The, yeah. the other terms. Yep. Because most people are going to feel that the value of a home is pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, everybody's fairly well educated. They know what the market is. They know what homes yep. are worth. Um, and they know what homes are selling for. I mean, it's easy to go and look online and see like, okay, similar homes in this neighborhood are selling around this price. So, I mean, for example, I just got off a call right before I jumped on here with a seller where... We have five different offers on a property. We literally make like spreadsheet of like, and here's... it was three of those offers were in within two thousand dollars of each other. Right, but there's so much other stuff to consider. You know, a person who is a, a home that's an estate sale that um, four adult siblings are trying to uh, sell mom or dad's house and move on and just split the money may be more enticed by fast closing time versus somebody who wants to sell their own, who wants to purchase a house as well and needs the money from the sale of their home to purchase that home. It, it's every single home, every single seller is such a unique set of situations that these contingencies can really sometimes make or break an offer yes. uh, for a buyer. Yep. And I've seen I've seen offers get accepted where it's not the highest uh, price. It, where it's not even close to the highest price. Yep. For some people, it is all about the money. For other people, it's not. For other people, it's something else. It's uh, like you said, time to close, or it's you know, whether or not uh, they have to worry those, about financing, right. whether or not Cash they have versus to worry about yes. um, home inspection, or, you know, they, I mean, it could be something as simple as they've sold a home before 
and they had a nightmare because of the home inspection. They didn't realize there was a, a major issue. And now all of a sudden the deal fell apart because they didn't know about this. And now they got to come out of pocket $10,000 to fix it. Yep. And so they want absolutely have to have to have a deal that the home inspection is waived or that it's a very short inspection window. Um, you know, there, there's a million different reasons and a million different things that can make or break a deal. And so these are some of them that, you know, different ways that you can help, especially in this type of market where you want to make it as attractive as possible. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I always hear you advise our clients uh, to when they're considering what offer to make, make the best offer that you will feel good having them accept and you won't feel bad if they turn down. Right. Where don't, you can't offer more than you're willing to give. Don't forgo a home inspection because you feel so desperate to get a home. Don't make any decisions that you won't feel good living with. So make the best offer with the most convenient terms for a seller where if they don't accept it, then you're like, okay, this isn't the one, right. the right one will come along that meets the needs of us as buyers and our situation. And that will also meet the needs of the seller and the person who's looking to sell it. Right. So, you know, I, I tell everybody, especially when we're talking multiple offers on the, uh, as a buyer, uh, make an offer that you won't be mad 30 days from now when you go online, if you didn't get it and you see that it sold for $500 more than what you offered. Correct. If you see that and you're okay and you said, hey, you know what? This was the best offer yep. that I was, that my number was as high as I was willing to go. It sold for $500 more. I don't care. That was that, my all in. That yep. is the number as long as it doesn't stretch you beyond your means. Correct. If it stretches you beyond your means, then we need to be looking at a different house. Sure. Um, because you don't want to put yourself in a bad situation financially just to get a house. Correct. Yes. And I think that's it. What else do we have? Anything else on the list of I don't things? know what else is on the list. So um, home inspector, disclosure, repairs, Who condition. chooses title and stuff like that. I don't think that's really a big deal. Here it is for... It can be. It depends. Who typically picks title? Depends on where the property is. In Fort Myers, Cape Coral, North In Fort Lee Myers. In Lee County, it is... Um, That's not what I'm trying to think of the word. Um, There's like a fancy phrase for it yes. that I don't know anything about. Yes. And I can't think of it. I'm going drawing a blank right now, but it is most common in Lee County for the seller to pick the title company, which then means the seller pays for the owner's title insurance policy as well. Um, the, in most of the other surrounding counties, it is typically buyer that picks and pays. Um, but like I said, it depends different, every, every county, sometimes cities have their own different, unique, uh, the way they do things. So it just depends on where you're coming and going from. I see to, here on our little list in my research, it said, and I don't know that I've ever heard this before, uh, a contingency that the buyer's loan gets accepted at an acceptable rate. Oh yeah. Now, is that something that exists where somebody can say like, I want to buy this house so long as at the end of it, I get 3% interest rate on my loan. It is, it is a part of the finance contingency. Okay. Where you can actually write in, um, what rate and also what, uh, what loan term oh, is acceptable wow. to you as the buyer. So you can put those details in there. If you leave it blank, it's 30, it's assumed that it's a 30 year mortgage on the term. And if you leave it blank, it is assumed that it is at the current acceptable rate, meaning whatever the mortgage company gives you basically. Um, you're of course welcome to shop mortgage companies and find the best rate available to you. But basically you, if you leave that blank, it just means that you're comfortable with whatever rate the mortgage company says you qualify for. And obviously if you put a rate in a term in there that is tougher to get, it's going to make the seller a little bit more concerned. It's, sure. some, it's something for the seller to consider. If you say I have to have a 3%, 
Well, guess what? Your credit might not qualify you for a three right. percent, or your debt to income ratio might and not so qualify. And so they want to pull a house 3%. off the market for 25, 30 days while to that question out. gets tossed around. Yep. And there's probably a good chance they're not going to want to in a seller's market miss out on that many showings. Yep. So those are all things. And cool. and again, when we go the other direction and it becomes a buyer's market, which at some point it will then all those things become much more favorable to the buyer and you can add in additional contingencies sure. and make additional requests and the seller is going to be more willing to do that because they want they need you as the buyer now they want you under the they want somebody under contract in the home yep i so, think that's it can we talk about next week i'm very excited <laughs> very excited because you've had a bunch of our friends yeah can you say and when can we talk about this oh my god yes the, listen this um, so next tuesday yes we have we're going to have a guest uh another one of our teammates um who handles insurance um homeowners insurance all insurance she well she does all property and casualty insurance so uh homeowners auto all of that but the purpose of us having her on talk about it Tuesday is to talk about homeowners insurance and why are our rates going up that's the number one question she's lucky that I'm not gonna be at no I love you no I but like these two are gonna talk and Jerry's gonna hit her with the hard questions like why is my homeowners insurance going up uh we have heard from people all over town about uh that have contacted us and said oh my goodness my mortgage payment just went up hundred dollars a month or um I can't believe this and I just got this and this is crazy what's going on and why and so so we don't speak out of our place, uh, coming from a place of experience in real estate, that somebody else's uh, wheelhouse. We're going to talk to our recommended yeah, one insurance. Yeah, of, one of our recommended insurance agents. Um, she's gonna come on and she's gonna talk to us about homeowner's insurance, not just about rates, sure. but also about- what, How to switch um, it, what it, what it takes to write a- Well- how to bind insurance i think go. is where you were going with that <laughs> uh, because it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem for people buying houses too is yes. just the simple fact of getting insurance on your home um there's there's a, been a lot of changes in the insurance industry over the last couple of years that have added to the difficulty in being able to get insurance on new homes when you buy it and then in turn it affects the sellers because it makes it harder for them to sell. So you guys join us next Tuesday on Talk About It Tuesday. We are going to be talking about what is going on with homeowners insurance right now. And uh, you won't see me, but Jerry will be will there. Be there with me. Maybe. Oh yeah, I'll probably make an appearance. Are you going on vacation? Can I? No. COO retreat. Nope. So we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, talking to us about home contingencies. I feel like I learned something today. Good. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I will type in all of our, I think here in the comment in the thing is our phone number 239-201-9583. Uh, Jerry Neesman at gmail.com if you have questions. If you uh, are interested in having us put your home on the market for you or uh, help you find the new home, a new home here in Southwest Florida, give us a call, give us a shout, let us know, and we are happy to help. Yep, our website's there, and then you'll be able to pick this up on YouTube here Same. in a couple of weeks. We, uh, we're a couple of weeks behind on getting them posted on YouTube, but um, check it out for our others if you missed the previous ones. The Neesman team on YouTube. Yep, and uh, also our home and community tours. Awesome. Yes. Where are you going this week to check out? Uh, Sarasota, right? I don't know for sure yet, but I'm thinking a brand new community that literally just opened like 30 days ago in Sarasota oh. that just opened for sale. And we had the brand new community. two new buyers buy in there within the last couple of weeks. That, That's exciting. And it's, it's a really cool community. I really liked it. So, you said there's a lot of parks and stuff, right? I can't wait to see it, hear about it. Yes. So I am thinking about, uh, I got to go up to Sarasota anyways, so I'm thinking about driving through and uh, showing off that community. That would be awesome. So, I look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. I have to kick off before my computer dies with this video, but yes, thank you so much. Are you going to log us out? Can you get us to? Bye, everybody. So can, oh, as I kick the table. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for joining